Hey, it's 531. Thanks for hanging out with us. We want to bring you into the conversation we're having. You may be having this already. Is August 29th too mm. early or too late to be going back to school? SAC Unified went back to school for us up in Placer County. It's old news. We've been back yeah. to school for a couple weeks now. Sure. Yeah. Natomas has Stockton, already been in school. Stockton, yeah. I think, was the first of August. So sure. SAC City wow. Unified with all those kids in all those schools finally going back today. Yeah, no, in Boston, they had this whole push about Save Our Summer where they wanted all schools to start after Labor Day. Yeah. You guys said that it used to start after Labor Day All anyway. Schools, they called it the traditional start to school for a million years was after Labor Day for everybody. So here's what some of you are saying on, on my Facebook page. We're all talking about it mm -hmm. on our Facebook pages. Go join the conversation there. Grayson was like, yeah, when he grew up, it was Labor Day, but now there are so many days off during the school year. He lives in Texas. He watches us online. He's yeah. like, you have weather days. You have all of these breaks. Right. Yeah, you got to start earlier than Labor Day. Good point, Grayson. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. If you ask my son who's starting... Uh, seventh grade today, no time or no day is a good day <laughs> to start school. Right. Okay, let's get to all your local and national headlines. Tracy, lead us off with traffic. Hey, good morning, guys. Let's start things off taking a look at your traffic this morning. You see a whole lot of green. That means everything is moving quite nicely. Many locations we're seeing that. So we'll start things off with Davis to Fairfield. Traffic is moving freely near the Vacaville area. We're looking at uh, cars coming at around 67 miles per hour on 80 westbound. Now, we're also looking at Fairfield to Sacramento, where we're also looking at a whole lot of green. Uh, looking at those cars averaging around 72 miles per hour on 80 eastbound. So here's a look at some of those drive times. Uh, Davis to Fairfield, if you're taking 80 westbound, that'll take you about 25 minutes to make that commute. And then from Fairfield to Sacramento, if you're taking 80 eastbound, that'll take you about 32 minutes with most cars, again, averaging around 72 miles per hour. Coming up, we'll take a look at that Elk Grove commute. In the meantime, we'll take a look at your traffic with Rob. All right, Tracy, it's yeah, looking with pretty Rob. good. It's looking pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and show you what, what we've got out here uh, in the Gilmore backyard. It's cool, it's pleasant. Yesterday, we got a huge break from the wind and hopefully you're out in it just enjoying this weather change because folks we've been waiting for this it happened it happened yesterday and it's going to keep on happening over the next couple of days we're going to be in that zone very close to our normal highs this time of year uh, we're waking up to temperatures in the 60s we've got a strong delta breeze right now especially once you get closer toward uh, travis air force base in fairfield vacaville so 60s as you're waking up 40s up high if the wind stays up all day long, you might not even crack uh, 90 degrees. You might only end up in the mid 80s, folks. Let's just say that you don't. Let's just say you're in Modesto or you are far north of Sacramento. You're still looking at highs that are drifting down. So I really like where we're going with this. The trend arrow is gonna be down. We've got a mix of 80s and 90s. It kind of just depends on where you are, but these are all pleasant temps compared to where we were just two days ago. Everybody was above 100 degrees. Nice change going into the long holiday weekend. We've got one more day to go, but some people are gonna kick it off early today or tomorrow. Back to you. All right, Rob, thank you so much. It is the first day of school for students in the Sac City Unified School District. New year means new laws, new budget. Carlos Herrera joins us live in Sacramento for everything you may need to know about Sac City's first day back. Carlos? Hey, I'm at the uh, district's uh, bus yard, or one of them actually, and this morning uh, drivers are already starting to show up here, heading out to pick up those students for the first day of school this year. It's the district's big day actually, and it's the biggest district in the Sacramento area. More than 42,000 students enrolled at 81 schools. It's actually the district that starts the school year the latest in the Sacramento area, late August, but heads up, a district spokesperson tells me this might be the last late start for the Sac City Unified School District. He says the district has proposed the school year next year starts two weeks earlier, just like other districts. He says it gives students a chance to participate in programs and college courses over the summer, something they can't do now since they end the school year so late. The district's budget has also been an issue in recent months. The district needs to cut $26 million over the next couple of years to avoid a state takeover. They hope to get close to that amount by saving on health care costs for employees. We know that we can get good benefits for a much lower price. And so all we're asking for is everybody to give us the opportunity to go shop on the open market for a better health plan that uh, will cost us less. There will be a lot of budget negotiations this year. You can stay up to date uh, online. There's a link on my Facebook page, Carlos Herrera News, so you can stay updated. Well, so August 29th is today and next year, Carlos, you're, you're pretty confident that uh, they're going to start when? 
August 15th, August mm. 16th, this targeted start date. A spokesperson tells me there are four labor partners that have already agreed to this uh, start. Mm -hmm. There's one more labor partner that needs to agree, but they're certain that they will. Mm. Okay, so it'll be a shorter uh, summer vacation next year based on... <laughs> I know that's not going to fly in my house, but hey, that's the way it goes. All right, Carlos, <laughs> we're live it. out at the uh, bus staging area. All right, other news. A woman says she came face to face with a mountain lion in South Sacramento. It happened just blocks away from Cougar Drive. Fish and Wildlife gave the all clear late last night. We, we spoke to the woman. She says she called 911. She's still in disbelief. So when I was, I was just so shocked and disbelief, just I knew when I seen it, it was like a mountain lion, a cat or some type of big cat. But I couldn't get a picture because I was shaking so bad. So by the time I did get to my farm, it got behind this um, thing that I couldn't see it. So I just dialed 911. All right, uh, neighbors were notified. Fish and Wildlife did search the area for more than an hour, but they couldn't find anything. Kirsten, so far, I believe that's the only witness to the mountain lion in the area, so we'll have to uh, stay on top of that story. Mountain lion close to Cougar, Cougar Drive. Drive. Yeah, yeah, that Kirsten, was, yeah, that was interesting to me, too, but she yeah. seemed pretty shaken up. Yeah. 538 right now. Let's get to some other top stories in your Daily Blend. Remembering Parmjeet Singh, hundreds of people held a candlelight memorial for a 64-year-old Tracy man who was stabbed to death while on his evening walk through the park. The suspect is still on the loose. We've learned that the security cameras in the park were not working the night he was killed. Police say they haven't worked in years. A potential new threat from North Korea. Satellite images show North Korea might be building a submarine capable of launching nuclear missiles. North Korea has launched seven short-range ballistic missiles in just the last month, but President Trump is downplaying those tests. He has done short-range much more standard missiles. A lot of people are testing those missiles, not just him. Kirsten Gillibrand drops out. The Democratic senator from New York is ending her run for president. She made the announcement in a video posted on Twitter. Gillibrand was not one of the 10 Democrats who qualified for the next debate ahead of last night's deadline. That debate is set for September 12th, right here on ABC 10. And that is your daily blend of news and information. If you got something you want to share with us when you see it online, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10 and it might end up right here on TV with the incomparable Walt Gray.